morning, Soul Searchers. We have a special guest with us here today. This is Louise Ivers, and we work together. We volunteer for the Long Beach Heritage Advocacy Committee. Uh, we're not here on behalf of them. We are here as, you know, community activists just talking about this certain project that is going on. Um, she's the author of this book. And it's being sold at the Historical Society of Long Beach on Atlantic Avenue in Bixby Knolls. And I will be using this book for reference on our routes. So, Louise, the Coffee Pot Cafe, what can you tell us about the current situation? Actually, first, about yourself. About myself? I am a professor emeritus. I taught art history at California State University, Dominguez Hills for 37 years and I am on the Cultural Heritage Commission. I'm the newsletter editor for Long Beach Heritage. I am on the board of the Historical Society as well and I'm very interested in saving old buildings in Long Beach. And some history about the coffee pot. It was built originally in 1932 and I've done some research. In the 1933 city directory, which is the first time it appears, so usually there is a lapse of one year in between when a structure is actually built and when it's listed in the directory. So I'm sure 1932 is the correct year. And also I did look in the county tax records and I found that same thing. So it was called the Coffee Pot Cafe at that time, but in the 1935 directory, it was already called the Hot Cha, which it was still called when I moved to Long Beach, which was in 1976. It was the Hot Cha, H-O-T-C-H-A. So it remained that for many, many years, and it was turned into a barber shop in the mid-1980s, and... The original owner of the coffee pot was E.C. Stuber, S-T-E-U-B-E-R, and he lived in the house next door, which was built in 1909, and it's also part of the property. And behind that is another house from 1913, and then finally two apartments over a garage, which were built in 1936. So the property includes all of this. Yeah. And uh, there are then three historic buildings on the site, um, the coffee pot itself, it received designation as a historic landmark in 91. And you're saying that um, during the time that it was, we were talking about this, that it was a barber shop is when they took those those stained glass windows out. I think. I mean, it was sometime fairly recently. My photographs, which include a picture in color here on the cover of my book. This shows what it originally looked like and there was a row of stained glass windows right underneath the coffee pot which was never painted until recently. Now it's bright red but that could be removed easily enough. And then there was another row of stained glass windows under here where the awning is. So those are gone but they could be replicated. Um, and we have talked to some people who seem to be interested in buying the structure and rehabilitating it whether the owner is interested in selling is another mm -hmm. question. He did not appear at the city meeting when he was charged with either fixing it up or demolishing it within 30 days. And that's a scary word. It's very scary. Demolition. I know. The fact that he, I, they're saying that, okay, well, this is just meant to scare him and to get him into action, but the fact that the word was even used at all is scary. Right. Well... Since it is a historic landmark, it cannot be demolished willy-nilly. Any permit for demolition would have to be passed through the Cultural Heritage Commission. And I assure you, we're not in favor of demolishing it. And the city officials say they're not also. Yeah. And um, if it did get through the cracks and it started to go towards demolition, they would have to take it off a historic landmark designation, wouldn't they? Mm. Other historic landmarks have been bulldozed. They're oh. only protected for about a year. Oh my goodness. Oh. But it does give some protection. Okay. Okay. And uh, the notice that the owners were given was almost 30 days ago. So we right. have until about February 16th. Right. 
for him to go into action and to clean it up, bring it up to code. Um, I drive past there almost every day. I no, haven't nothing, seen Nothing has anything. happened. I know I drive past there almost every day too, and he hasn't done a thing. Um, so hopefully he will sell it, but he doesn't answer any phone calls. Evidently the newspapers have tried to contact him. There's been a lot of publicity, again, the Lime Beach Post, um, the Lime Beach Register, the Orange County Register, um, the Press Telegram, everybody has written about it. Right. But we did have a success last night. We did. We saved the donut. Yay, at five five donut. nine zero. Oh, you have a donut. <laughs> That's do. great. You have a, a, a pink frosted donut, <laughs> just like that one. <laughs> yeah. That's not the original paint job on the donut, though. <laughs> no, no. But it's the biggest donut around, and there are three other ones, but they're much smaller. And it's similar in size, I think, to that Randy's Donuts up in Inglewood, yeah. which is a historic landmark in, in that city. Well, the pink donut that we're talking about is the one at 7th and Flint. It's right before PCH, and currently the original grind is there. Um, easy to see. <laughs> you right. can't miss it. So it's anyway, last wonderful. night at the planning commission meeting, the developer agreed to keep the sign on the property. So the matter will come back at next month's planning commission meeting and hopefully by then he will have a new design with the donut in place. So we've scored a success on that and we want to score a success on the coffee pot. And I just think it's so wonderful. Uh, the community uh, efforts that we got in this, the, the big commotion that was stirred up because of it and just all the support that came out. You know, there were 23, 25 people oh, that waiting, went up to, waiting in line. I had to wait yeah, a long time to speak. To speak <laughs> about the matter. And I just hope that we can get this kind of attention and this kind of effort from the community um, in regards to the coffee pot. Right. Well, if it comes before the Cultural Heritage Commission, I'll be on the other side of the dais. <laughs> yeah. So what can, uh, what, the, what can the community members do? to help in this effort with um, the coffee pot. Write letters to development services and to their city council people asking to force the owner to clean the place up or sell it. Right. And um, I know it seems kind of trivial, kind of ridiculous, but uh, when it came down to the donut, there was a Facebook group that was started the Save the Donut. and. You know, social media. No, kind no, of we need a Facebook, a Facebook page for saving the coffee pot. That yeah. is what we need. Because that page was up for maybe five days, mm -hmm. and it blew up it over did. a thousand people that liked it. Right. And um, my goodness, all those people that showed up for the planning commission meeting. I I hope that we can get something like this for the coffee pot. Right. That is, that is what we need. And I read some posts on Curbed LA also about the donut, and only. One or two of them were in favor of demolishing it. Everybody said they would never go to Dunkin' Donuts if the sign was removed. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So <laughs> I'm sure they want the business. <laughs> and now for, for myself and getting involved um, with the historic landmarks and, you know, getting involved with Long Beach Heritage, I think that these are items, treasures, really, of Long Beach. It's what makes us really special and um, makes us different from other cities. That's and, true. Uh, it also shows the respect that we have from, you know, the history of where we came from and what we've done over time and um, what for you makes this important? I mean, the preservation. Oh, well, I've been a preservationist pretty much all of my life and I'm not in favor of saving every dinky old historic building because then architects would have no jobs and we do need to have right. modern architecture. But on the other hand, important historic buildings do need to be saved, and unfortunately a lot of them have already been subject to the Wreckers Ball in Long Beach. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can save the ones that we have. <laughs> exactly, the, the ones that are left. There seems to be more of a momentum nowadays for saving historic buildings among younger people, which mm -hmm. is good. <laughs> well, being here in the city for over 20 years and Growing up and seeing them, it's just become a part of my life and what 
I would want to keep seeing there. And I hope that future generations can appreciate right. at least be able to see. <laughs> well, when, I, when I first moved here, I've lived here for over 20 years, 1976. What is that? 38 years? <laughs> I've lived here for 38 years, I guess. Um, and when I first moved here, that's what was happening was all the wonderful old buildings were being destroyed. And that's why I moved to Long Beach was because I was able to buy an old house that was in good condition. And also that it had this wonderful historic downtown, 80% yeah. of which is now gone. So we do need to save the few remaining pieces that are aesthetically important. Yeah. Well, speaking of a wonderful home, thank you for inviting us here. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you so much for taking the time out of your morning to talk to us about this. And I hope we can get some more people involved with this. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. Okay, and thank you, Soul Searchers. Yeah. I hope we can get this going and get some passion and stirring up in the city about this. Thank you so much.